All right, well, welcome to IDX Brokers Getting Started webinar. My name is Becky, and here with me is Alec. Good morning, all. And we're going to be going over your dashboard a little bit, we're going to be going over your account information, working with a few mobile responsive options, uh, showing you how to create a neighborhood page with the saved links, and how to set up some lead reg registration options. And here is your new dashboard. Let me go ahead and get rid of that since you guys are already here at the webinar. Thank you for coming. Here's your dashboard and your round navigation buttons. First, let's take a look at your account options. First thing you'll want to see is the billing information. This one's real simple. Um, if you ever need to update your billing information, you go to account, billing, add edit. Here you can uh, add your credit card information or edit and save changes down at the bottom. Account info is where you can change the display name, update the primary email address, or your address that shows on your website along with the phone number. Save changes. Anything like the um, company name or website address those need to be emailed in, as you can see here, to mlsinfo at idxbroker.com. Also under account, you can change the password. Under preferences, here we have global preferences, where we have the mobile options we mentioned. By default, the mobile options uh, our use mobile wrappers are usually set to yes. This is for the mobile wrappers. You want to go and elaborate, Alec? Of course. So not all of the original templates for IDX Broker are mobile responsive. So there is a mobile wrapper option that essentially puts all of your IDX forms in a vertical menu that fit very well on a mobile device. However, these aren't necessarily the best for branding. They're fairly standard. So if you have a mobile responsive site and you want to use something like the mobile first template that is entirely mobile responsive, then you can go ahead and turn these mobile wrappers off so they won't change your site over to the mobile options. They'll just keep the existing mobile site and then all of your branding will stay the same with that site. You can also set detect tablets as mobile device as yes as well. Or you could set it to no and it'll register it just like it would a desktop version. Another option under preferences is the saved links. This is where uh, you can also refer to it as the community pages that we mentioned. Let's go ahead and create one. The best one we like to choose is the advanced search page to use. This one has the most options. So next step, and what it does is it brings up basically your advanced search page. So you pick out your criteria, and let's go ahead and pick something that'll give us some results. How about Boca Raton? And we'll leave the price field open. And let's do Pets Allowed. And my next step is I have to name it. Or how about Pet Friendly? And then I can always come back and edit these items later. I can save and then manage my links. If you ever see this, it could mean that something could be in the search box. It could be a space. You could have an old search item in here. So I'm going to delete just in case I have a space in there, which it looks like I did. So here's my link, Pet Friendly and Book of Raton. And I can go ahead and preview. I had eight results. So now I can take this link and put it into the menu of my website. So if we want to change the layout of, let's say, the page that you just saw, uh, our results page, we would want to go to Designs and then Pages. 
And these are actually really good. Uh, these are the page links that come with your account right away. Here's your search pages. This is where your featured properties page is. Sold pending page, supplemental, details, so on and so forth. And so to change the layout of that results page that we saw, this will change it for the results page across the board. Here's results, and we'll want to edit in the layout. And here's the current template that you saw. Here's our other templates to choose from. Which one do you think we should try? Uh, let's try mobile first. All right, let's give mobile first a try. This is our responsive template. Okay. And then we can go back to pages, or we could even check out our community page that we've made. And now, as you can see, it's laid out differently. All right, so next up, lead registration preferences. This will be under the round button leads, lead registration preferences. And we actually have a couple different options here. You could use the slider system that you can see right here. We've got conservative, balanced, and aggressive. The description of each setting is below. Or you can customize your settings. Here we have the sign up page settings where you can also edit the fields on, this, on the contact form. And then the global registration rules. Here's where you can customize those registration preferences. We have request registration and force registration. Request registration is where you can have, after so many signups, it pop up the little window and still give your visitor the chance to exit out of it if they're not quite sure yet and still be able to peruse your site. Force registration is where it'll pop up after so many views of whichever so many searches or so many photo views or so many results pages and if they don't sign up they'll get directed back to just a search page and will not be able to continue on their results. You can do both. A common thing that has been seen is let's say you request registration after three views and then force registration after five and you can have different settings for each one. So go ahead and set this one for Recurring, so we want this to keep coming up over and over and over and over again. They can close this one out since it's a request, not a force. Uh, but let's set that recurring after every th maybe three search pages. And uh, we can just use the standard default messaging, but that can always be edited as much uh, as you want uh, to brand it with your stuff, to, to remind them about specific steps. Um, and then let's also set a force on that one. You can save that and then just click force. So I want people at some point to be forced to register for my site. I'm not giving away this stuff just for free. I want them to actually contact me. So let's do after 10 pages. Uh, so they'll get the request uh, three times, pop up, pop up, pop up. And then by the time they visit 10, which is quite a bit actually, um, they will either have to sign up or they'll go all the way back uh, just to the default search page and they won't be able to search anymore. All right, so let's go to our search page. So let's say I do a search. And then that was one, two, So I've performed three searches. So as soon as she hits the fourth one, so it's after three, boom. There's, there's my request. So this one I can X out of because it's only a request. So this one, this part will take a second. And remember, these are category based. So if you move on from a search page to a results page, it starts an entirely new countdown. So uh, your settings will be different on results page, on details page, um, from, the, from the actual search page. All 
Okay. And here's my forced. So now if I try to... Nope, that was my seventh. So now if I try to exit out of a forced one, it doesn't let me search again. It took me back to the home page of this website. You guys can kind of see what it will look like on a smaller device. See, so resize this if you have a phone. So the, it looks more or less the same. It just resizes better for a phone or a tablet. But you can maintain the same look and feel on a desktop or a mobile device with the mobile first numbers. So we have a question. Uh, if they X out of the registration, the force registration, can they get back to the sign-up page? Yes, as soon as they visit the, the search page again, it'll pop up. So if I go back to your search page and I try to search again. Then it pulls up that sign up and you can go ahead and sign up from there. Show us a map page. Here's the map search page. And then is that one as responsive as the rest of them? It is. So the map here is also responsive. So here's a good question. Is it possible to change the position of the elements on the results pages? So let's see, you can actually change what shows up on the results pages. Um, everything is ultimately customizable with uh, JavaScript or CSS, but, oh, it's not on the results page, but rather on the details page, you do have the option to change those things around. So if you go one step in from a results page, you get to the details page. And on the details page, you can actually change some of the fields that show and you can put them in whatever order and what, uh, under whatever uh, category you wish. So see, we have, yeah. go ahead. You can do uh, drag and drop, delete, or remove from the list. Uh, these are the extra available fields that the MLS provides us, and you can uh, just click the plus sign to add them in. And these are the options that display on the details pages. and then save up here. Uh, also, actually, this brings up a really good one. This is the same type of thing that is available for your advanced search page. We actually get that question a lot. The advanced search page found right here, designs, pages, advanced search, has this section as well, fields. For your visitors, uh, you go here, you find the property type you want to edit, view settings. These are the extra fields that your MLS provides us. They can be added to your advanced search page. The ones that are there when you first get your account can be removed uh, by the trash can. So these are extra search options for your visitors. Community or examples, interior options, location options, uh, story, that's a big one. Some people want a single story like the one I used to set up our saved link, whether it allowed pets or not, so on and so forth. Community names. Uh, safe property type layout buttons are at the top. So those help a lot. Any questions? Well, that's a good question. The idxbroker.com URL does affect SEO. And in essence, what happens is until you change that, all of your uh, SEO credit does come back to us. So what we recommend when you set up an account is to create a C name record um, that points to the IDX broker pages. And then you can have all of the pages on your uh, domain. Uh, so they point to um, a subdomain of, of your domain. So they do search.yourwebsite.com or homes.yourwebsite.com. And then that SEO credit is great, and that returns back to your primary site. There is custom CSS um, within your account. So there's actually a section you can do designs, custom CSS. You can use this to override the main CSS within idxbroker.com or within idxbroker account, and you can set all your settings right there. Yeah, there we go. So on the details, so if you go to the preferences, and then the details, your default map provider, you can pull that down and sh select walk score. Um, and then the key for your uh, one is already in there. 
And so then when we refresh a details page, we can scroll down to the bottom and see our walk score show up right there. So it shows us how close restaurants, coffee, et cetera, are, and it gives a little walk score map. You can also change that to street view or to other options as well. Schools. Yeah. Schools are a big one. Yeah, and we also have um, what was previously Find the Best um, that shows actual scores for the local schools, uh, shows some history information as well. Walk score does indeed come with IDX Broker built in. Uh, you just have to go through the settings and turn it on. Uh, but it comes with a premium uh, walk score account. Thank you very much. And of course, any other questions, feel free to email them to help, H-E-L-P, at idxbroker.com.